So hello everyone, my name is Laura and I have the YouTube channel Laura's Little Library and I am joined by Emma Baven who is the author of Where the Briars Sleep and it came out this year. It's a really amazing Victorian Gothic novel. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So I have some questions for you, obviously. Um, the first one is, I know that you, so you grew up um, where the book is set in, um, around Baltimore, is that right? So I grew up in um, Southern Maryland. I moved, the, the, the sort of the house is based on where I grew up, but I moved it just because I thought it would be better if it was closer to the city. Right. That's really cool. So, I mean, yeah, can you tell me, did you ever experience any fantastical, interesting things while you were in the house or in the area, or was it just inspiring? It, I definitely was really creeped out when I was living there. Like, my friends didn't like to spend the night in that house. Um, my grandmother was friends with all, the, the, all these old ladies um in Solomon's Island and they would get together and play bridge um in her sitting room and they all thought the entire island was haunted like everybody's house was haunted and they used to say that you know they could hear talking in the walls at my house um I did not experience that but it was definitely creepy um I definitely was creeped out by the wardrobe because it, the door kept coming open, like in my book. And it, my I, my friends wouldn't sleep in the twin bed in my room. They would only sleep in the same bed with me because they said the hangers were rattling in the closet at night. Um, I, for the most part, feel like I, I constantly had that sort of heavy, oppressed feeling um, when I was in there, uh, really didn't experience a lot of notable incidents. It was more the compounding of the atmosphere. I know when I was little, I can say, um, I remember waking up, I was pretty young, the, our radio in the living room, so we lived in the, what was formerly the servants' quarters. It was my grandmother's house, but me and my parents, my sister, lived in the third floor, and I remember being woken up by the radio being on at top volume. It woke everybody up. My parents were like, what's going on? So I have no idea what the explanation for that would be. <laughs> um, I definitely, uh, I once woke up it, when I was, I had moved down to the second floor because I was older and I didn't want to share a room with my sister. And one morning I awoke and everything in my room was sort of vibrating, trembling, kind of. Like, you could hear the clacking on my dresser because I used to have all these little knickknacks on the dresser, things clacking. Nothing fell over, but it just kept shaking, 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 shaking. And I remember I was like, okay, I'm just going to go upstairs. So I went upstairs. I did my hair. I came back down, and the stuff was still shaking. <laughs> so, really? Yeah. <laughs> so I definitely, I don't know. I, there was a room I used to call the haunted room, uh, which was sort of across from my bedroom because it had that like ultra oppressive feeling. You had the feeling of being watched in mm -hmm. there. And I definitely like I thought when I was a kid that there was an old woman who used to pace back and forth behind the bed because it's sort of like what I saw in my mind's eye. And strangely enough, my grandmother had had a psychic come there who said the same thing. And I didn't know that at the time when I said that. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Creepy. Oh, I can definitely see it. that would and did make the perfect setting for your novel. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, that's insane. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you are a big fan of horror thriller genre in general. Have you always been a fan of it because of like your house where you grew up or was it something you came more into? 
I've always been a fan of like horror and dark stories. I remember being like five years old and reading Anderson's fairy tales. And one of the stories I really liked was uh, the red shoes with the girl. She keeps dancing and dancing and dancing to the point where she has to have her feet chopped off and the shoes with the stumps of her feet dance away. Um, so I think that part of it was just something I was naturally inclined to, but yeah, living in that house definitely helped. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so what were some other things that inspired the novel? Did you have people inspire characters? I mean, other than your house, uh, just where do you get your inspiration from? So I guess for that, it was mainly the house, but also I am a voracious reader of gothic romance. Um, I used to read pretty much nothing but. And so I read so many, like they were typically short stories and these multiple collections. And eventually, you know, I was kind of like, well, I want to write my own. I have all these ideas. I think about these stories a lot. So I just went ahead and started writing. <laughs> nice do you have any favorites or recommendations of some of your favorite like horror romance well I would definitely say that if you like those sort of like Victorian stories that you should definitely read Turn of the Screw uh by Henry James He's also got a great short story that I love that was in, you know, in one of these collections, I was constantly reading collections that was called The Romance of Certain Old Clothes. Um, I would also recommend Elizabeth Gaskell. Um, you can find a lot of her short stories, my favorite being The Old Nurse's Tale. Okay, thank you. I'll have to check those out, definitely. Um, yeah, do you have any, so you mentioned some authors, but do you have any advice for people who want to write a novel, whether it's specifically horror or just in general? Well, if you want to write, then you should write. I know a lot of people say, you know, oh, I want to write this, I want to write that, and they never write. So you really have to be dedicated. Like, I was writing every single night, regardless of how creative I was feeling, regardless of how terrible my day was at work. I was always writing, and that's the dedication needed to create a book. Yeah, no kidding. That is amazing. I am definitely one of those people who is like, oh, I want to write this kind of book. And then I, I sit down and I read instead of write. Um, so that's amazing that you have that dedication. Um, so how long did it take you to write a first draft of Where the Briars Sleep? The first draft hmm, it was a long time ago. I'm trying to remember. It's like, actually, I think the second draft of that took longer um the first draft was initially maybe like six or eight months and then I wrote the whole thing and I decided I didn't like it so <laughs> I scrapped the whole thing and then went on to the draft that became where the briar sleep wow I have a tendency to do that scrapping entire drafts I just it's like I'll write it and there's just something that just I just don't like that just isn't you know what I envisioned and I end up scrapping the whole thing. Wow. Did you do any editing of that draft before you scrapped it or did you just write it all say no and start again? Um, I basically yeah I wrote it all and then I read through it and I decided that it just wasn't it, it wasn't what I intended to write mm -hmm. and yeah so I actually originally wrote it in first person uh, so I changed it over to third person. I changed some relationships within, and I definitely didn't have that same ending. That ending came later. I was riding the light rail to work, and I thought of it. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I won't ask you too many things about the ending, because I do want to keep this a spoiler-free interview so that people are encouraged to pick it up, obviously. Um, but so the book takes place obviously in the 1800s, it's Victorian. Did you have to do a lot of research for the book or did you already have a lot of knowledge? Like, what was so that aspect I, like? Oh, I used to like reading a lot of nonfiction and also true crime from the 19th century. I was really big on that. Um, 
one of the books that I found really helpful is called Bowing to Necessities. And it's about manners um, from the 17th century through the 19th century. And you sort of really kind of learn a lot about how people behave, how they were expected to behave. And it was really helpful when I was writing um, Rose's character because I wanted her to have this kind of like, she knew how to act, but she couldn't quite behave. Yeah, you. I really picked up on that, especially at the party scene. Um, that, oh, that was like so good. And just the whole book had an amazing atmosphere of having that old Victorian, but also just the constant creepiness. <laughs> it was, oh, it was just so amazing. Um, did you ever have any hard moments or moments you felt like giving up or that you weren't going to uh, finish it? Or was it all just kind of, eh, I'll scrap it and just try again? In that, uh, with that story, with that second draft that I wrote, I was very intent on finishing it. Um, it was definitely a goal for me. I do get that sometimes when I'm writing in some of my other manuscripts, I get to a point where I say, I don't know where the story is going and sort of drop it into the bin. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice. All right. So these may be some dreaded questions coming up, but do you have a favorite character of yours? Of mine, I would say that Rose was my favorite. Character. Rose is your favorite. Good. <laughs> it's nice to have a good protagonist there. Um, and then do you also have a favorite scene or a scene that you're really proud of or you felt the most confident with? Hmm. I think it was uh, more so the, the scenes where Rose is interacting with the wardrobe and she's sort of imagining what can creep out at night when she's not looking, when she's asleep. That was sort of the scene I really identified with and it kind of reminded me of how I felt when I was young. So I really like that part. <laughs> All right, and then I do have one more question. Are you writing anything else? <laughs> I am, yes. I have actually a fi another finished manuscript that I, Again, I had scrapped its original. I guess that's sort of my habit now. And I wrote that and read through it. Um, I had I had another manuscript as well, which I decided recently to scrap. And I'm rewriting that now. So I'm I'm doing for that a vampire type story. Ooh. So yeah, that was that's something that always sort of interested me was sort of the, the the old school vampires, you know, not 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 the new ones nowadays, but you know, the vampires who bewitched you to drain your blood and that kind of thing. Mm, so. Oh, that good old fashioned Dracula. And, <laughs> oh. oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me again, everyone. Pick up Where the Briars Sleep. It's an amazing book that came out this past July. Also, fun fact, there is a giveaway happening. And the best way to enter this giveaway on YouTube here is to subscribe to, subscribe to my channel, Laura's Little Library. Comment down below, letting us know if you've picked up the book, letting us know that you've subscribed, maybe your favorite book. Um, but then also, please follow Emma on all of her social media. She has Instagram and Facebook. The links to that will be in the description below. And those will give you more chances and opportunities to enter in the giveaway to win a free copy of Where the Briars Sleep. So yeah, thank you all so much for joining us. And thank you, Emma, for doing this with me. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, all right. Until I see you in the next video, I wish you happy reading.